Awo, shalom, Rastafari. Now, we don't have too much time on this particular recording. Probably have to recharge our um, the batteries and get some more time for it. But we're gonna briefly, briefly take an introductory um, point of view or get a prospectus of a particular subject matter that once again was brought to our our attention now um okay let's get this this is a old a old um um uh, older how can you call it a uh, tract or um flyer handout something that we used to in fact we're bringing them back actually um, some of the Imro, the Imero, and Imros, the, the the need for them. In fact, the time of that particular famine is up. There was a famine for some years, and that famine, as we mentioned, based on the scripture, will be a a famine for hearing the word of Adonai, or the word of Jah Adonai, Yah Adonai, or Adonai Yah. In other words, there was a time there will be a famine. And that particular famine, in other words, there's another kind of famine coming, but it's not a famine of the hearing of the word of truth or the word of God. And um, speaking of God and speaking of um, Jesus Christ and speaking of Ethiopia and ETs, let's just show you this right here. This is a, a text that is, um, that is called... Uh, is God an alien, an E.T., or was Jesus or Jesus, Isus of Nazareth, an alien? Now, of course, to some, these teachings may seem a little bit uh, speculative. Some may regard it as uh, spurious. How can you dare speak about Jesus is no alien? He went up into heaven, didn't he? I mean, he, he, just, he just, according to the Bible, he went up into heaven, right? Now, what's the connection with these aliens or what we hear about aliens and ETs and Etiopians? Oh, they say Ethiopian, but the T and the C is basically one and the same. So what is the connection between, like, the Ark of the Covenant and the aliens and the ETs and the Ethiopians? Is there even any connection? Now, one thing for sure, before ancient Egypt was, Ethiopia is. In other words, before ancient Egypt, because the Egyptians themselves actually says that the root of their, they said that Osiris, Isis, and that whole divine family, actually were, they came from the headwaters of the Nile. They called Ethiopia uh, the Kui land, to say the God land, which was Tobia or the Tob land. And Tob or Tov in the Hebrew, it means good. And the Tob Yah is the good Yah. Now, let's just show you this right here. Let's just demonstrate if we will. Okay, so we have this talk about some aliens. There's a history show um, pro program on aliens. And we haven't seen this program in its entirety, but the subject matter is, is, is not new to us. But it's, it, it is interesting what is their perspective. Some say that aliens may return and they're going to take the Ark of the Covenant from Ethiopia. This is one of the so-called rumors that are out there. If there's any aliens, it must be the aliens, the reptilian aliens that would like to take the Ark from Ethiopia because the Ark has a special place with Ethiopia or with the righteous Ethiopians. That's one reason why it hasn't been seen for so long because the key factor is the righteous or Tzadikan Ethiopians. Let's touch on ETs, right? E.T.s. You remember there was a movie a couple of years ago? It was um, called E.T. Now, if we add this right here, we have Ethiopes, right? 
And then if you add the I-A-N, you have Ethiopian or Ian. If you look at it like this, you have Ian, right? So you have Ian and Ian. The Ian and the Ian is a sort of age, right? Now they're talking about a new world order, right, or an NWO, right? So we have a new uh, world order, but really it's a new age. We're coming into a new age. Now everybody knows that the 2012, right, is a syzygy or a solar a galactic a universal alignment. So when you look at this part right here, that now is the Ian part. But let's deal with this part, the Ethiops, right? Ethiops. Have you ever looked up Ethiops? You look at the etymological brackets and really study Ethiops. If you haven't, please do it. Please do it. Study and show yourself approved. Now, why is it so important for us to study and show yourself approved? Because in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, no one will be made to be naive. See what I'm saying? Period. No one has to be made to be like even. No one is going to be forced into the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. In other words, into the kingdom of God, or as your Bible says, the kingdom of heaven. So it's a, a kingdom that is coming from the heavens, right? It says, thy will be done, thy kingdom, done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then Christ goes up into heaven. This is one of the reasons why we ask a particular question that we ask, um, is God, right, is God an alien, an E.T., or was Jesus of Nazareth an alien? Was he an alien? Now, let's, just, let, let's do this as well. Can you see this right here? Just to make sure you can see the full board. Now, let's write, um, we're going to get back to Ethiopes for a moment. But let's, get, let's deal with alien, right, for a moment. Now, what is alien? Now, we don't want to alienate anyone, do we? What is alienation? Do you feel alienated? Well, you know, being black in this world and, and being true black, you know what I'm saying? When we say true black, we're not talking about the outer world. We're talking about the inner of truth, you understand? Being true black in this world does feel like an alienation. Now, alien is from the Latin alien. Alienus, from alias. Do you have an alias? It means belonging or related to another person. Belong or related to another person. Mm, that's interesting right there because I'm a Rastafari. That means I'm of or belong to Rastafari. And according to Rastafari, you understand, he is of or belongs to Jesus Christos. And Jesus Christo says, my kingdom is not of this world. So, hmm, maybe I, I do belong or I'm related to another person, place, or thing. Because this world is not, this world is not my own. Is, it, is, it, is this your world? Is this your world? Then you might be responsible, but it's not my world. Um, strange. Well, they do say I and I are strange, don't they? Related, belonging, or owing allegiance to another country or government. Hmm, that is interesting. Uh, do we owe allegiance? Now, if I'm a Christian in truth, then I owe allegiance to Christ. And if the world is being run and governed by the God of this world, who, which Corinthians says is the devil, so the God of this world is not the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then I do belong and I owe allegiance to another country or government. The kingdom, a kingdom is a government. So if a kingdom is a government and we are of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, then we actually don't owe any allegiance to this world because Christ, our Master and Black Lord and Savior, he said that my kingdom is not of this world, so his kingdom was of a, another world. Did he mean another world as to say another aeon, another age, a new age perhaps? Hmm, no wonder so many strange things are happening, you understand, nowadays. Now, it goes on to say foreign. Foreign, righteousness, that's foreign to this world, ain't it? But righteousness is not foreign to the kingdom or the government of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why they crucified and persecuted his majesty, because he was about righteousness and the world, 
the world is, is Satan's been deceived by the devil. Okay, so we are actually to be foreign to this world system. Ah, differing in nature or character typically to the point of incompatibility. So you can differ in your nature and your character to the point of being incompatible with the world. That's why I and I get this fight because we're not. It's it's not compatible that we can, you know, be one with you know. It says it says we can't be unequally yoked. All right. So now also alien means this. It means a person of another family, race, or nation of another family, the family of God in Christ. Now, that's interesting right there, the family of God. Do you remember in the Hebrew studies, uh, 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 what do they call um, God in the Hebrew? What's the first word in the Bible, uh, um, if you read it from the Hebrew, the, the, the Hebrew Bible? What's the first word for God? It's not that G-O-D, that's good, that's come from German, that's another God actually, it's a little deception there, but what's the real, Elohim, let's, 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 let's put that here, Elohim, but then in ancient Egypt, and from the ancient, because since Egypt's root come from Ethiopia, once again this link with Ethiopia right here, we should touch on this, shouldn't we? on Ethiopia, well, firstly, clearly, it's E.T. That should give you a, a link right there. You remember the movie E.T.? It was like E.T., phone home, E.T., phone home, right? Um, he wasn't of this world, but, of course, that was a lot of make-believe, Steven Spielberg, other kind of Jew, you know. Some of that was a little bit psycho babble because it really had nothing to do with Ethiopia, but and if we try to take that movie, we'll be forcing an interpretation. The main thing is the name, because E.T. means what? E.T. means extra, right, terrestrial, right, terrestrial. Now, what does extraterrestrial mean? Extra, above or more, like extra, extra, added, right, added terror, ter terror, added terror, terrestrial, added Terrestrial, added territory. How, now, how would that relate? This is what ET means. Now, most people think ET. You see, here's what, here's what people get confused. This is what you have to study. People, when they hear about ETs, right, they think that ET is a celestial. But uh, extraterrestrial is not a celestial. This is a big mix-up in words. And people don't understand these basic words. I'm talking about words on earth. How can they understand things in the heavens properly? Think about it. Extraterrestrial basically is um, extra, you know, like when you have a mountain, right, a mountain or mountains. Ethiopia is called the roof of Africa. Wow, Africa has a roof. The roof of Africa is called in the ancient the land of the gods, all right, the land of the gods, more properly the land of the, the Ali, Ali or Alu, which is a shortened version but related to Elohim. And the source of the headwaters, the oldest civilization, the culture, so forth and so on, comes out of this region, the real land of the so-called rising sun. We could put a little sun right there. Okay, that is interesting. So we have alien Elohim, E.T., extraterrestrial. See, the movie should have been called Celestial. If he was from out of it and now this is from the stars, it should have been called Celestial. This is how they mix the people. Actually, I don't think they're not all that wise. They're crafty, these new world, so-called pseudo-new world order types. You know, they're cultic and they, they have propensity for great evil, Satanism and all this other vile and unclean kind of stuff. Because remember, the devil was a Celestial. He was a celestial, but he fell. He's a fallen, you know what I'm saying? He's a fallen one. So back to an alien. An alien means a person of another family, race, or nation, a foreign-born resident. Hmm. There's a lot of Ethiopians who are foreign-born. Anyway, who has not been naturalized, who has not been naturalized. But wait, if you're an alien, it says... 
it says, furthermore, if you're an alien, this means that you have a different nature, right, a different nature to these people's nature. Can you remember what it says about um, the alien of a belonging to a different place and it's saying it having a different nature, but here it says that an alien means a person of another family or race or nation, a foreign-born resident who has not been naturalized and is still a subject or a citizen of a foreign country. Well, as a Christian, we are supposed to be born again, and we are supposed to be not of this world, not naturalized in this world. That means that evil, violence, bloodshed, chaos, all the things that the Almighty hates are supposed to be alien to us. And we're not supposed to be naturalized until we think, well, that's life. When you hear people say, oh, another person was killed and murdered and raped, oh, that's life. That means you're becoming naturalized to this world. And if you say you're a Christian, then you probably are a liar. But anyway, a foreign-born resident who has not been naturalized and is still a subject, that means they are still subject or a citizen. Didn't it say that Abraham, he was searching for, for a country, like he was, and we as Christians are, are searching for a, a, a higher citizenship? Think about that of a foreign country, now foreign vis-a-vis -vis this, a foreign, this evil, this wickedness, this violence. Like people get so used to evil that they think that evil is natural. And they have a lot of philosophers who have deceived people on that very idea. Broadly, a foreign-born citizen, then it has extraterrestrial. So once again in this definition, it brings us back to extraterrestrial. There's a couple of questions I want to put out to you, and then we're going to touch on this Ark of the Covenant. Um, are there aliens? Are aliens coming? The only aliens that are trying to get the Ark of the Covenant are some reptilians, basically. That's the only aliens that are trying to get the Ark of the Covenant. You know, this, but, um, and maybe they put that out in their History Channel video to kind of send a signal and, and, and to kind of warn both us and them of what their secret agenda is. Because recently um, the Ethiopian Pope Paul, yeah, we got a Pope Paul too. His, his name is um, Abuna Paulos, right, Paulos. Anyway, he, he went to Italy, you know, where they had the Satanism stuff and that man that knocks where they blame two black men. One black man was set free. One black man is now the only person serving time for this. Is it racist? They're trying to deny now that it's Satanist. But anyway, be that it may, um, the Ethiopian Pope Paul went over there to, to meet with Benedict and, and, and the Italians. And he's talking some madness. He's like, oh, we're going to open a museum and the people, everybody can come and see the Ark of the Covenant on display and so forth and so on. And that is interesting that that probably came out around the same time as History Channel did its particular um, um, programming. Program. So get with the program. You get it? Anyway, we're going to leave you with a couple of these questions right here, and then we'll get into a little bit more of this. First of all, just, just jot this down. We didn't go into a full, but, but the ET is the Etiops. Now, of course, it can be spelled differently, but Etiops is from Tob, from the Hebrew Tob. Tob means good. Tob means good. Remember when man was created in Genesis 1? It says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. You know that part in the scripture? That's Genesis 1. Don't confuse the creations in Genesis 1 with Genesis 2. A lot of people do this. They even try to, 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 to compress the two, like make the two one. You understand? But the, the, the fact that there's chapter 1 and chapter 2. You can't compress chapter 1 to chapter 2. Just like you can't compress... Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back into one movie. In the, they're two different chapters. So in Genesis 1 is one chapter. And in that one chapter, 
if you read it from the Hebrew perspective, or they have a lot of good Bible study software that you can download on your, on your phone or your computer, and you can actually study the Bible, and then you can click on, say, a particular word and see, well, what is that word in the Hebrew? And if you click on the part where man was made, or rather created, in the image and after the likeness of the Elohim, now remember, Elohim literally means gods. Now, Christians will tell us, well, this is not gods like ancient Egypt and stuff. That's where a lot of um, you know, whitewashing Eurocentric Christians, they'll say this was actually the, they say it was actually the Trinity, right? And everything was created through Christ, the New Testament tells us. So they say that Christ was the word because through his word, he made it, right? But then Christ gives us a little indication of his own nature in Revelation when he says in Revelation 3 and 14, which is the whole pi, the number of pi, or the five. Think about it. You saw that movie pi? Five? Anyway. It's um, word, right? It's really, he says, I am the amen, right? And he further says that he is the beginning of the creation of God. Not only does John say it in Revelation, Hawaii of Allos, Paul, the real Paul, he says it in his epistles, and basically it's throughout the scripture. But then Amen is another God. This is one of the oldest gods or Elohims going back to ancient Egypt, and the Egyptians say that the root of their civilization come from the, from the headwaters of the Nile where the rich topsoil, that rich red topsoil, you know, that red like that Adama, the Adama. The Adama comes from the Ethiopia, and this is where the beginning of their civilization as well, too. So we see from the Bible is a lot of um, uh, connection. But remember when Elohim, that's who the Bible calls him, Elohim. You might call him God. I, I, you know, we use that, but in, in truth, when we start to get to a higher level of, um, of, of truth and speak truth, he was Elohim. When Elohim or Ha Elohim created man according to the Hebrew, not according to King James, Queen Jane, and, and all these other people. But we use them as a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. So when Elohim created man, he said, let us make man. In fact, um, you probably know this pretty well. Let's get this right here. Let's turn our Bibles. We're going to use this stepping stone. King James and the Schofield is our stepping stone until we can get our balance and be able to climb to a higher height. So uh, Genesis um, chapter 1, verse 26. You remember that? It's the sixth day, and it's the creation of man, not men. God did not make, or Elohim, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, He did not make men. Mm -mm. Elohim made man, and it's man that makes men, and it's men that cause all the problems, all right? So let's understand. Let's get back to mind. This is why, this is the beginning of manning up, spiritually speaking. And Elohim, or God in your Bible, verse 26, said, let us... Us, so it wasn't. It was, but why? Why it says God here? If actually Elohim can be interpreted as God, it should say and Elohim at least. That then they could get around this difficult God thing, and at least put Elohim and explain the plurality of divinity and the Trinity of person and all these other kind of, um, you, you know, these kind of uh, theological concepts they like to throw in the mix you know, to take away from the plain meaning. Well, let's, let's deal with the Peshat, as the Jews call it, the Peshat. You know what the Peshat is? Let's deal with the plain meaning. You know, the meaning that a child would even understand is to be as a child again. So Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Clearly it wasn't one person talking to themselves. Otherwise, uh, I've never seen a, a schizophrenic creator. You understand? But let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them or make them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing and that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So, in your Bibles, gold, 
which is a German or uh, uh, Eurocentric idol. Um, it acts as good. It says, so Elohim created man in his own image. Hmm. In the image of Elohim created he them, because Elohim already was, he said, let us. So it wasn't just he, but it must have been more than just he. So it says right here that in the image of Elohim, which is plural, sometimes translated as gods, some say as the, quote, trinity, um, in the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. Now, how can Elohim, which is not singular in that sense, but by definition means gods or, quote, trinity in that sense, how could he make them male and female and that Elohim not have within himself male and female? Hmm. I mean, if, if this is supposed to be a logic thing, now some people tell you, oh, it's a matter of faith. What they mean is a matter of be lie, be lie Eve. You know, they want to be lie you. But let's look at it the way it is. Now, as you go on to verse 28, it says, And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Now, you know, the interesting thing about this, people say, this is, the, this is the first creation. This is where God created everything in this chapter. You know what? Tell them a lie you tell them. Maybe if you say he recreated everything, because otherwise, wh how would you replenish if there was not already a plenish? You know, you know, you know how language replenish, refill. If I say, can you refill this for me? Doesn't it mean that the, that it was filled before, but maybe it got emptied out? So can you? That means there was a catabol or a cataclysm from before. So we're speaking about a former age, a former eon. Let's understand this, because we're about to go into a new age. I'm not talking about the stuff that people want to make you believe, but it's actually a new age, which is really going beyond even their wildest dreams and imaginations. And also the fear of the black planet. Let's just make that clear. You remember fear of the black planet some years ago? They were right in exact. They tried to suppress that. But it says, and do it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the living thing, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. You notice that right there? Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Let's just go to verse 26 for a moment and look at that. It says, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. Hmm. That's interesting. Then 29 says, And Elohim, because if we want to understand what the end is about, what is the end going to be, how is it all going to end, so to speak? Or how is one age going to end and a new one going to begin? We have to understand, well, how did it begin? You understand? We need to understand the, the end from the beginning, so we need to return to the beginning. And Elohim said, verse 29 of Genesis chapter 1, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of of a tree yielding seed, and it shall be for meat. Hold on for a moment. Station identification. Okay. You know, we got to bless the herb. You know, it's an authorization spiritually. You know, we're recognizing that he has given us this. Mm. You said man, man made some laws? Men made some laws? Some men made laws? Listen, that's another point right there. But verse 30 says, let's go back over verse 29 again. And Elohim said, behold, I have given you every herb, every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth and the fruit of the tree and so forth and so on. There's nothing about I've... I've given you debtors. 
You say I gave you meat, kill that animal, and so forth and so on. This is the beginning. You remember, we're living in a world now where eating meat and eating animals and eating blood has become like a normal sort of thing. But that's a new normal. That is alien to us. That is foreign to us. Now, many people have been naturalized to this Satanistic way of living. And that Amanda Knox thing, uh, check out what I, my comment on Amanda Knox and that whole case because that's a case for Satan. Basically, we can call it the devil's advocate. You remember that movie, Devil's Advocate? Yeah, it's a trippy movie, ain't it? Yeah. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I would suggest um, 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 check it out. Verse 29, and Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. And to every beast, verse 30, of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creep upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every herb, every green herb, for meat. That means for food. In other words, that is the meat. That is the food, and it was so. Mm. Now, this is the way Elohim created it. In the beginning, right? He says to the to the beast, to the fowl of the air, to everything that creep upon the earth, which has life. That's the key. Lahayim, chayim, that has life. That means that those who have been naturalized to eating dead don't have life. See, that's that's the key right there to understanding why we are so alienated from this world why this world feels strange, why those of us who have come to a certain Christ consciousness recognize that we are foreigners, not just in America, America, you know what I'm saying, but we are foreigners in this, in this world. You know what I'm saying, we are in the world, as Christ says, as our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach says, but we are not of the world. You see, if, if you don't get this consciousness, then you need to be born again. You need to be born again, and you need to be born again before it's too late. You understand? So you can become an alien to this world and, and, not, and not naturalized to this evil way of living. You understand? Well, this evil way, which is death, basically. It's a, they, they call it walking dead, living dead, so forth and so on. Eating dead is, you know, everything dead. You hear about people getting killed, people getting murdered, people being raped, people getting sold, people getting enslaved, people, all kind of Satanism. The Satanists get let go, and, and the black man gets demonized. But when we touch on Adam and the fall of the black man, Adam, we will understand better why all this is happening to black man in particular. Because remember, this is who God created in the beginning. And we will learn how he lost his sovereignty, how he lost his uh, divine rights. You see, all the laws can be laws and all the right can be right, but if one does not enforce that right, and first of all, if one does not know what is their right, then nobody's going to tell you if you don't know it. They say ignorance of the law is no excuse, and ignorance is the original sin. Make a note of that. Now, let's look at verse 31 and conclude this chapter right here. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Now, please, if you can, if you don't, don't be like Eve. Know this truth as I and I know this truth. Look it up for yourself. Go and look up the Strong Concordance and the Hebrew. The Blue Letter Bible is a great, a great online resource, and there's probably plenty of others. Look at what is the word for good. And when you look at this word for good, you're going to find the word. Do I have any room up here? I'll put it right here. You're going to find the word T-O-V. Now, some say T-O-V. The modern Jews say T-O-V. And I, we've touched on the V and the V-W and the, and the, like they say, some say Avraham. Avraham. You understand? Really, it's Ab. So you can see how they change the V, the B to V, and so forth and so on. That little tricky, that little tricky um, business right there. But it says, it was very good. Now, if you look at every other day, when he created it, he said it was good. It was 
Tob. Tob. Tob is at the root of Ethiopia or Tobia. That P is really a B. That H is really not there. That E is basically the E. Uh, how can I explain that E to you? The E is basically Ya. Is basically Ya contracted. Ya, Ya, Ya. You get it? Ya, E. That E there. But that's a little linguistic lesson. Make a note of it, and hopefully um, either you can study it or we'll get into it or a combination of it, and, and that will be clearer to you. But the main part we want to focus on is the very good. It is very tob, or in the Hebrew, tob me'od. It is tob me'od. It is very good. Now, we've got to take a pause for the chorus. Uh, we see that we have just enough battery power to conclude this right here. So stay tuned.